Hi, in this video we're going to talk about counting and in particular we're going to talk about things called permutation and combinations. Before we do that, let's, uh, let, me, let me discuss something called the fundamental counting principle. Uh, so it states that if there are, it, it involves a number of ways of, of completing a job and when a job is broken down into tasks for the job. So if there are M ways of performing the first task for the job and then N ways of performing uh, the second task for the job, then you multiply M times N together and that'll give you the number of ways of uh, completing the job. So you can easily generalize this to more than two tasks. Uh, so let's look at an example. So in Western music, there are 12 notes in an octave. So I've got a keyboard, an octave on a keyboard uh, on the screen there. And the question would be to uh, maybe determine the number of melodies consisting of three notes that can be played within an octave. So let me explain what I mean by a melody. So for instance, I could choose the notes one, 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 and then the melody would just be the, uh, the sequence of those notes. So in this case, or maybe I could choose one, two, three, and the melody would be, or five, nine, twelve, or, and the last example, what I want to do now is take the five, nine, twelve and, and select those notes in a different order, maybe five, twelve, nine, and then that melody would be, of course, that's a different melody than the five, nine, twelve melody. So then, um, so going back to our question, we want to determine the number of melodies uh, consisting of, of three notes. So uh, once again, let's look at the 111 melody. And what I'm going to say with that is that because I was able to choose as the second note, the same note that I chose in the first note, in, in this case one, uh, one was repeated, then I would say that repetitions are allowed. So anytime repetitions are allowed, we're going to use the fundamental counting principle, and we're going to draw a little picture to illustrate what we're doing with the fundamental counting principle by just drawing slots. And so the first slot would be our first task of, of choosing the first note. The second slot would represent the second task of choosing the second note, and, and so forth. And I'm interested in the number of ways of choosing these, uh, of, of performing these tasks or choosing these notes. Uh, so the first note, I could choose any one of the 12 notes, and the second note, because I'm uh, allowing repetitions, the second note, I have 12 choices for the second note, 12 choices for the third note. So the fundamental counting principle would say, well, I multiply all those together, and I get 1,728 as the uh, number of melodies uh, that, that I could that consist of three notes. So I've highlighted what we just answered, the number of melodies consisting of three notes that can be played by an octave. And I want to kind of tweak that, that, that statement just a little bit. Uh, so on the, on the last line there, instead of consisting of three notes, what if I said consisting of three distinct notes? So for instance, if I choose one, 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 well, one, one, one would be repeating uh, a note, so that's not going to be allowed in this in in the number of melodies consisting of three distinct notes. Likewise, even one two two. Well, the two is repeated. That's not gonna. I'm not gonna allow those. So what I'm gonna say here is that repetitions are not allowed. So now let's move on and, and look at a another important question. Let's say that I just happen to choose the notes. 5, 9, 12. I chose a 5 first, and then a 9, and then a 12. So the melody is... So now the question is, the next important question, what if I chose, uh, you know, once I have those three notes, and again, it's important that I've already selected those three notes, let me choose those exact three notes, but in a different order. Maybe I choose the notes as a 5, and then a 12, and, a, and then a 9. Then the melody becomes... And of course, that's a different melody than the 5912 melody. So 5912 melody is different than a 5129 melody. And so what I would say in this case is that order matters. So what we've, what we've established then in this particular question, when we have three distinct notes, what we've established is that repetitions are not allowed and order does matter. Order matters. In this case, we can again use the fundamental counting principle to answer this question of how many uh, how many such melodies exist. So I draw the picture like I did again, and I'm again interested in the number of ways of choosing, uh, of, of, of choosing the first note and then the second note and the third note. And because the, rep, uh, the repetitions are not allowed, I still have 12 
uh, still have 12 choices for the first note, but now only have 11 choices for the second note. Again, repetitions are not allowed. 10 choices for the third note. And the fundamental counting principle would say that my answer then would be 12 times 11 times 10 or 1,320 different melodies consisting of three distinct notes uh, that can be played within this octave. So now, I want to focus my attention on the 12 times 11 times 10, and I want to rewrite it this way as a fraction, and just bear with me, you'll see why in just a second. I want to rewrite it as a fraction this way, and that numerator and the denominator are each, um, uh, there's a, a statistical symbol for that, namely factorial. So the numerator is a 12 factorial, and the denominator is a 9 factorial. And statistically, there's a, this expression is the expression for what's called a, a, a 12P3. I'm reading this as a 12P3. It's the number of permutations of 12 objects taken three at a time. Uh, this, is, this is what that would, would reduce to. And generally, the formula for an NPK is N factorial divided by N minus K factorial. Okay, so now, when repetitions are not allowed and order matters, we can use the fundamental counting principle, but what, we've also, what we can also use, we just established here, is that we can use permutations also in that case. Okay, so now we've answered the question of the number of melodies consisting of three notes that can be played within an octave. Three, I'm sorry, three, three notes and then three distinct notes. So now I'm going to change it up just a little bit more. And instead of melodies here, I'm going to talk about chords. Well, let's determine the number of chords consisting of three notes that can be played within an octave. And so, for instance, I might have a 4-8-11 chord, which would sound like... Or I might have a 1-6-10 chord, which would sound like... Or a 1-5-8 chord... Uh, the sound of a 158 chord would be okay now let me make a, a, an observation here our, qu our first question that we we wanted to answer earlier was was repetitions allowed and of course repetitions would not be allowed in this case because I wouldn't have a three note chord if I chose one 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 and I just played the one 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 chord that's not three notes that's one note so that's not a three note chord so the so repetitions will not be allowed in this case but now does order matter and when we were talking about melodies, when the chords were played in sequence, the, the order did matter. Now let's talk about chords. Uh, we just played the 1-5-8 chord. Let me play that again for you. Here's the 1-5-8 chord. And so when you ask the question, does order matter, again, you, f you start with a certain, uh, a certain selection, in this case, 1-5-8. I started with a 1-5-8. Now I'm going to ask myself, let me choose those same three notes in a different order, maybe a 1-8-5, and let me play the 1-8-5 chord. Well, of course, that's the same chord as the 1-5-8 chord. So let me back it up and show you again. 1-5-8 chord. 185 chord. Of course, it's the same chord. And so when, when we're, the, the answers to our questions then, what we've established now is that repetitions are not allowed, otherwise you wouldn't have had three notes. But here, order does not matter. The, the order does not matter in this case. Now, let me strike out the word not here, and, and, and let's say if order did matter, what we found before was that if order did matter, we would have had 13 in, 1,320 uh, arrangements in that case. of, of um, uh, That would have been the, the three note, distinct three note melodies, uh, and that was a 12P3. But now order does matter, so we have to kind of, let's go through a thought process and figure out, well, how do we count the number uh, of, of chords now that order does matter? So, for instance, we've established that the 158 and the 185 uh, chords are going to be the same, three-note chords. I also, I think it's pretty obvious, I also could have selected a 518 uh, the five note first, and then the one note, and then the eight note, and then, and then played that chord, I would have got the same chord. Five, eight, one would have given me the same chord. Eight, five, eight, one, five, eight, five, one. They're all giving me the same three note chord. So when I was counting permutations, those were all counted separately. Those are all separate, uh, dis uh, three distinct note melodies, but as a chord, they're all the same. They're the same. So I want to count that as one. 
And of course, there was no reason that I should, you know, this, this is true for any three notes. For instance, if I chose seven as my first note, then two as my second note, then 11 as my third note, well, I'm gonna get the same chord, different three note melody, but the same chord is if I would have chosen 11 and then a seven and then a two. So the question becomes, once you pick a, a three note chord, how many other ways can you pick that same three note chord? So we'll just use the, the fundamental counting principle again. Uh, again, the, the, it's important that we're talking about, uh, that, that, that you understand, once you pick one three note chord, now how many other three note chords are, are equivalent to that? And so now how many choices do you have to pick that first note? Well, because I'm, I'm talking about just that one three note chord out of the seven, the two and 11, what can I pick as the, as the first note? Well, there are three choices. I could have picked the seven, the two or the 11. And then the second note, there were two choices left over I could have chosen for the second note. And then finally the last note, there was only one choice left for that last note. So my answer is a three times two times one, which is, uh, which is six. And it's not hard to see what the six notes are. You've, you see them on the left side of the screen. With the seven, two, and 11 uh, chord, I could have picked the 11, seven, two, the seven, 11, two, 11, two, seven, the, the ones on the screen. It's not hard to list them out. But those are, uh, again, those are different three note melodies. So in that 1320 number, those were all thought of as different, that different outcomes in the 1320 outcomes, but they're the same three note chords. So I want to count them as the same uh, as one uh, as one chord. Okay, so then when we go to the question, determine the number of chords consisting of three notes that can be played within an octave, I'm going to start with the 1,320 that I had, and then I'll divide that by six because I'm separating the 1,320 uh, uh, three note melodies into groups of six, where each group of six is representing the same the same three note chord. And so 1,320 divided by six or 220 is my answer to this, uh, to this particular question. Okay, let's kind of, uh, let's take this a step farther though and, and let's think about where that, uh, the, the 220 is coming from. The 1,320 uh, in the numerator is coming from the 12P3 and where did the six come from? Well, the six came from a three factorial. So now I'm gonna plug in the, the uh, numeric expression for the 12P3, namely it's 12 factorial divided by nine factorial, and then I get this complex fraction that I'm just gonna simplify as a 12 factorial divided by three factorial times nine factorial. There's a statistical symbol for this expression, and that's a 12C3, so you can re read that as a 12C3 or a 12 choose three. And it's the number of combinations of 12 objects taken three at a time. Generally, the formula here is that a n choose k is the n factorial divided by k factorial times the n minus k factorial. Okay, so now what we've established now is that if repetitions are not allowed and order does not matter, in that case, we're gonna use combinations. And this is the symbol, uh, this is the formula for, cal for calculating the number of uh, of, of uh, combinations of n objects taken k at a time or n choose k. There's one other symbol that you're likely to see in this in, in your study materials and it's this symbol that I just put on the screen and that symbol it, it looks like an n divided by k without the divided by symbol and just in parentheses but when I see that symbol I generally say n choose k. Okay, so finally, let's look at a summary of, of, of counting, uh, a counting flow chart. There's two questions that you have to ask. The first one is, are repetitions allowed? And if repetitions are allowed, then you're going to have to use the fundamental counting principle. There's no, no, other, no other way to, 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 saw, to determine the number of ways to complete the job except to use the fundamental counting principle. If your answer is no, then you ask a second question. Does order matter? And once again, what it means when I say does order matter, you assume that you've made one selection of choices for all the tasks, and then if you make that, uh, choosing those same selections but in a different order for the, for the task, do you get a different outcome or not? And if the answer is yes, you do get a different outcome, you're playing a melody here. And if you're playing a melody, you, can, you use permutations, use an MPK uh, to, to calculate the number of, of uh, ways to complete the job. 
Or you could use a fundamental, count, fundamental counting principle if, in this case too. So you have a choice between using a permutation or using a fundamental counting principle. With order, when, you, when you're trying to decide if order matters, if the answer is no, then you use the uh, combinations. You use NCK. Okay, so this is a good, good uh, flow chart for you to uh, kind, of, kind of commit to memory to help you uh, when, you're, when you're trying to count. Uh, I'd like to thank my, uh, my son, Jason, for, uh, for coming up with this example. I was trying to explain to him what I was doing with this example, and I was struggling to find a, 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 good, a good way to come up with uh, uh, you know, a good example to illustrate the, 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 the concepts in this video. And uh, he's the one who came up with this uh, melodies or, or, or chords type example. So I want to give a shout out to my son, Jason, for that. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.